Hello and welcome along to Ear to the Ground. Well, this is the last programme in the current series, but we are going out with a bang because I'm coming to you here from Rwanda in the heart of Africa, where I'll be finding out about the harsh realities of life for Rwandan farmers. Kigali is the capital of this former Belgian colony, which despite being little bigger than Munster, is home to a population of 10 million people. But its fertile landscape has borne witness to the mass murder of one million of its own citizens. 15 years ago, the world looked on in horror as it surveyed the aftermath of one of the worst genocides in history. Today, Rwanda has succeeded in restoring normality, but life is still tough for the vast majority of its huge population. The Irish aid agency Trocra has been working here since the war, and they invited me to share a day in the life of a Rwandan farm family. Tassien and Speciosa grow cassava, beans, soya and fruit on their tiny one hectare farm. What are you doing here at the moment? Weeding, just to protect the cassava uh -huh. and later on plant some beans. And is it possible for me to help them a little bit? Not we must. Us. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I set to work weeding cassava with this hard-working couple, but it wasn't long before I began to feel the effects of the blazing African sun. I think I'm going to need a lot of water today. I might come across a kind of a green stripe going up through the field here in a few months' time. <laughs> oh, that was Dara's patch. This is everyday life for Speciosa and Tassien here. And I tell you, it's a long way removed from first world farming, but this is farming in Africa for hundreds of millions of people. After a couple of hours of hard work, Speciosa goes to prepare lunch for her children before they go to school. Meanwhile, Tassien and I set off to harvest some soya, which is used to create a protein-rich soya milk. He's also keen for me to try out some cassava, a staple part of the diet for many sub-Saharan countries. It's good. Good. Yeah. Mm. It's okay. With a curious audience gathering, we set about collecting some grass for the family cow. It's a far cry from Saj making back home. This is the house cow that was common, I suppose, on every Irish farm years ago. Uh, as you can see, she's got a fine pair of horns in her. She's milked every morning and evening. The milk from the morning is actually sold and the milk from the evening is consumed by the family. She doesn't look like though she's given 40 litres a day. Despite being better off than many farmers in Rwanda, Speciosa still has a lot of hard work to do preparing the family's main meal of the day. So we're about to plant the field that uh, we spent all morning uh, weeding and preparing and uh, we're going to plant it with these beans that uh, Tassien and uh, Speciosa grow on their own farm. I'm getting the hang of it. The interesting thing about the, the cow that we were feeding earlier is that she's kept not just to produce milk for the family, but also for her manure that actually ends up here to fertilise these crops. Without it, the family has no access to fertiliser and the crops would probably fail. Then it was time to go back to the house for dinner, a wholesome stew of produce from the family farm. Over the meal, Speciosa told me how the local co-op has helped them buy seed and get credit to improve their farm and grow better crops. Mm. 
But Tassian explained how drought in the past few years had reduced yields, leaving even less for the family to sell on. After dinner, Speciosa took me to the village where Trokra has supported a craft group to generate a little cash income for local families. Women weave baskets and other items to earn around a euro a day. Not a lot for you or me, but enough to enable a family to send their child to school. We are involved in the handicraft. We are also involved in the crop selling at the market. So many families in Rwanda are poor. And they don't, some of them don't have access to the formal bank. And due to some microcredit and microfinance initiative, which has been promoted by Trocla, now the poor people are accessing the capital to invest in income generating activities. <laughs> The women made this highly skilled needlework look deceptively easy, so I decided to try my hand. No laughing. <laughs> After a long day, it was time for bed, and boy, was I tired. So there's a bit of deliberation at the moment as to whether I'm going to be spending the night with her out here in the yard or if there's any room in the house inside, so we just have to wait and see. Luckily for the cow, I got to make up my bed inside the house. Oh. Next morning, the mist was down as the village went to work in the fields. I sat down with Tassien to shell some groundnuts. As we worked, he told me about his experience of the genocide 16 years ago. When the war started, I was in Kigali. So I find a truck. It was going out of the town. There was there a checkpoint, uh, which was controlled by Inera Hamwes, the killers. So they just pointed on me and they asked me to come down and they wanted actually to kill me. Uh, everybody uh, on the truck started um, crying, shouting, pleading for me that they may not kill me, and they happened to let me go. Did you believe that you were going to die at this point? I felt like almost dead when they said that they were going to kill me. My body was like a tree. You survived the war. How did your family get on? Apart from myself and another relative, all others have died in the war. It's about 15 people. Those who have committed crimes against others, uh, there is forgiveness. People are trying to live together in harmony. As a farmer, what I want to say now is that I don't really need any war again and want peace in our country because that's what makes us be able to do our work and live from what we do. Before leaving, the family and I shared one last meal of delicious local fruit. As a token of my gratitude for their hospitality, I had some small gifts for the children. There you go. <laughs> but as I left, I knew it was me who had gained most from the experience. Okay.